G'day crew, welcome back. Todd from Toxic Garage Customs here. And if you've tuned in to this episode, then I presume that you're here to watch part two of mounting the International L110 cab to the HJ Holden one tonner chassis. It's pretty good series, I think, these videos, because it's a question that I get asked a lot about. So in this particular episode, we make a heap of progress. We go from working on the International on the side of the road, on the trailer, to working at down the bottom of the driveway and we pretty much get the thing mounted. Now there's another episode after this, but there's a lot of progress made in this one. So follow along, hope you get a lot out of it. And if you do, don't forget at the end, like, comment, share, and subscribe, but I'll see you at the end of the video. Enjoy. Okay, I've just moved one of my subframe rails. What is this, peak hour? To the front of the car. And I'm just gonna see if I can slide it under the cab and on top of the chassis. I think there's plenty of room there because I've actually got to build cross braces on top of this. So I should have 50 or 60 mil or thereabouts of spare space to play with. So I'm hoping I can just slide it under, sit it on the mount points, put the mounts under there and do some measurements. Let's see if that plan works, eh? Well, it worked. I've just got some blocks of timber holding the cab up that I know to move out of the way. But it's working. I'll take him for a closer look. So you can see that needs to come out this way, I don't know, 40 or 50 mil. Blocks of timber just there, holding the cab up in the way at the moment you can see hopefully the subframe rail going underneath the cab and once we get a better view we'll be able to see how high the cross member or adapters the outriggers however i'm going to do it need to be and this comes through the back here that's actually the mounting point there so as it turns out i didn't think the length of this would matter well guess what couple of mil too long to be able to get it across but so it will sit there it needs to be shorter it needs to be cut here somewhere so that I can actually clear this brace but that'll go there as I've said go mount go under it and away we go and the same on the other side what we do have is once I've got the rubber mounts in, I've got this much space. So that I think, I'm upside down here, I think that there is one of my cab mounting points. Could be wrong, could be in the center. I need to get under there and have a look. And then I'll have a look at the front as well. But you can see I can fit like a fist in there. So I can build a cross member across here from side to side, pick up the mounting points wherever they may be. Oh, that's a good angle. I'm happy with that. Come back to you. So I um, have popped the mounts under. So it's sitting there. The bolt's a little bit crooked, and that, the reason being is I can't quite move this back all the way. It literally needs to move a couple of mil because it's hitting on that. That. It's not going to matter. I, um, not going to matter at the moment. I'll just, I'm just doing some measurements and so on at the moment. 
it won't matter. So I'm going to crawl underneath this so that I can get some measurements so we can get a better idea, I think, of the amount of space we're playing with and so on. I'll crawl under there. I've popped the other one in place somewhat. Again, I cut this at 1553mm. The ironic thing is, if it was 3mm shorter, it would fit nicely. But it's not. So, what I'm going to do is, I actually had it lined up in the front here, the bolts and the holes, and I just squared a mark up. I'm just going to choose this point here, then the Cross, um, cross member, just come up there, just got to cut this there, and um, it doesn't need to be longer than that, it's got a good footing on the mount, I'll cut one side and I'll cut the other side, reason being is that I took my blocks of wood out from the other side and I've actually sort of, I went and so I took the blocks of wood out, I guess I repositioned them. The mount sitting there and then I've got the block of timber sitting under the cab that's so actually supporting it at the moment. So I'll take the driver's side out, cut it to length, bring it back up, put a block of timber on it to make a mount, then I'll take the other side out and do the same, have them sitting in the right place. Then when I've got it sitting on the timber I can actually slide the cab around more freely to really get it squared away so that I can uh, actually start making the cross member. Okay, so I've spent several hours now um, working out measurements, putting things in place, crawling underneath that truck on that trailer. Um, I'll just show you my face for a second. That might indicate what I've been doing. Anyway. I have, I'm using the steel that I had, so this is the rear brace, so that's the front, front, driver's side, subframe, subframe, and then this part, this is massively oversized, but it'll do the job, it's uh, 50 by 100, and um, what I've done, I've located, I spent a lot of time working out the position for it, so the, the hump, on the chassis goes just in front of it here so this sits about 15 mil in front of that so it'll never contact it if it settles it won't hit anything um, so this is where the rear rubber mounts go this here picks up through the cab and underneath if you can see that underneath I have Put a larger hole there so I can put a socket up there, tighten a, a nut and so on. So a bolt will drop down from the cab through the, the mounting point on the cab into this brace. I'll probably eventually weld a nut, so capture a nut underneath just to bolt the bolt straight into. I would prefer to be installing this and building this on the chassis in place, but because of my predicament with where it is got no way of lifting it, nowhere to put it, then I'm doing it this way. So I've taken a million measurements, getting it square, getting it level. So I've got this chopped up, it's level across the back, it's level across the front. It's square and so on and so forth. So what I ended up doing was, so that these straight edges and things are just holding in place the outriggers that I made. I use the straight edge so that when I weld them and I tack them, and I'll do it when I finish the weld as well, I um, have them on the same plane as each other and on a straight line. So it's my reference. So what you can see there now is that they go out and they pick up the original 
cab mounting points at the front, excuse me, at the front, and that picks up the cab mounting points at the back. That hole there, and that hole there. Through here, there's actually about half a dozen holes on either side, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly why there's so many or how many I'm meant to use, but I'll probably use several of them. So the tricky part, the, the, the really tricky part is going to be actually getting this in under the cabin, under the, on top of the chassis without taking the cab off the chassis. I think if I drop the tail shaft and bring it in from the back, I might be able to do that. But if not, I might have completely um, created an issue for myself. But I'll have to just work that one out. If it comes down to it, so I'm only going to take it. Right? If it comes down to it, I will cut the back brace off. I believe, I know, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to slip the side rails in, pop those in place, and then put the um, rear brace back in while I'm underneath the cab. I sort of considered welding it together laying on my back underneath there and quite frankly it didn't sound very pleasurable so I decided not to do that. So here we have it. Once I get this done, Tacked. I'm going to slot it up there, try and slot it up there, see how it goes. Haven't drilled any holes on the front yet, because I yeah, just haven't. And I still actually haven't worked out how I'm going to do that either, but that'll come. And uh, I haven't yet drilled the holes for the rear mounts, which I might do in a minute. I'll chuck a couple more tacks on this, just to keep it stable. And then I will put some holes there so I can slip some bolts into the rear mounts and away we go. It's about six o'clock at night and the breeze is just coming through. It's been a scorcher today. I am really really worn out. I've drunk about 10 litres of water and uh, I'm almost ready to pack up. Okay. I've flipped it upside down. You can see uh, again that's where everything sits in relation to each other. And so that's the access holes to mount to the cab. So this is the underside. So you'll be able to get a socket in there to do a nut up. This one, the bolt will come through from underneath. So my finger is the bolt, it'll go in. And then there'll be a nut welded on the other side that it'll just screw into. They're slightly off center and that's intentional. When I say it's intentional, these rails are probably about five or ten mil closer together than what they might be supposed to be. It's not going to matter, but all it does is offset this this bolt hole. It doesn't matter in any other way. Just when I was laying on my back, it was a bit hard to see that. I think I've got it right. But at the end of the day, if the bolt holes line up and those braces are pretty much in line where everything where they need to be well it's gonna do the job quite well okay back into it <clears throat> it's been a day had a big storm here last night no damage that's okay um so i'm just notching this subframe section here at the front so i've put a slot on either side so that the rail that the, the cab's going to sit on just there is about 50 mil wide so it would it sits really nicely on top of that outrigger i've actually made this about 70 mil wide this slotted area just so that when i knock it down weld it and so on i don't have any interference from the weld or anything like that i'd figure it's not going to make any difference if it's wider than it needs to be but it will be annoying if i don't make it wide enough I've made it about 20 mil deep through here. I think that's enough. I'll find out. What I'm and I've just taken a little extra slot out there. I haven't really done any measurements of how long to leave this piece of steel, but the idea is that I want to try and straighten this part out. I don't know how lucky I'm gonna be. I think I might have to end up cutting it. But the point being, I want to bang it down, bang this piece down so that it goes 
on an angle, like a ramp, from this point up to this point, and then that should cater for. It's just that, that part there, just from about there to there, that I have to accommodate. This part will sit on top of the rail, this part here I need to just come down. So I think it's going to be okay. So I'm going to knock that down, weld it up, and then I'll have to fill in the gap along here. I'll bring you back. I think I might cut a bit more of this off. Might have to relief it back a little bit more too. It's actually quite strong. So, I didn't put you through the pain of the bashing. I cut off another couple of small slits and then belted it down. You can see it's actually tucked in there nicely. Let's go to that little ramp effect for that to be able to sit in. <coughs> I'll weld it. Weld it along here, weld along here. So when I do all that, and then uh, I'll just get some plate, I'll clean this up, it's just some 3 mil plate, and I'll make some little triangular patches, one for there, one for the other side, weld those in, will be reinforced again, be as strong as it was before, and hopefully have enough clearance for what I'm after. I've got to do the same to the other side. And... Uh, and we'll move on, move on doing the welding to this, I'll work out some gussets and so on. We'll come back. I just gave that a bit of a clean up. Never be afraid to pick up some old steel and start using it. And all I'm going to do is mark that where it needs to be. I've just made that gap big enough to be able to fit the steel in there as well. So I'm just going to mark that so that it's so that I know the size, the shape, and um, cut it, hold it in there. It's not the exact shape, that's okay, it's the right size, so I'll just, I'll chamfer back here a bit, give it a bit of penetration on either side, same here, and then once it's in there I'll just grind it off to shape, really it's just filling a hole, but I'll make it as strong as I can, I'll just make another one for the other side now, same thing, and then it'll box it in nicely. So I've got those just sitting in place. You'll see this one's hanging forward, that one hanging back. That's okay, I'll weld where I need to. I'll grind off what I don't need and then I'll finish the weld off. Got my Unimig Viper 185 set up. You've seen me work between a couple of places, so I've got this welding trolley that I use. It's got my weld on my bottle, consumables, grinders and stuff on there. It's a bit heavy. But um, let's say that when I'm going from here to up there, out there, up this driveway, then I've got some, a lot of stuff with me. I've got a pretty big bottle, so it makes it heavy. But yeah, the trolley's good, just made out of scrap. Anyway, so I'm just going to tack these in place, then I'll grind off the bits I don't need, and then I'll weld it up. So I'll probably show you steps in between. Just back to this for a second. The Uni MIG, I really like these welders. They're really good welders. I find it fantastic. I'm just working to the settings that it says in there. I tweak it every now and then, but for, I'm welding that plate there's three mil. And so it says to use 20, 20 um, amps, 8.5 wire speed. I'm pretty close to that, it should be fine. 
So I've just run around the bits that I can. The bits that are sitting proud on the top of the steel here I'll grind off flat. Um, I've got good penetration, I did V at a bit as well. This bit here, I'm just going to grind off flat and I'll weld it up. But um, yeah, I think I'll put the strength back into it and I should have the clearance that I need. And that's our finished product there. I haven't um, fully welded the other side like for the outrigger that you can see. Box. I gave it a clean up, not to try and knock the tops off the welds or anything like that, just to get the, um, the splatter off and sort of get it good enough to paint. At the end of the day, it's a subframe. It is what it is. It's got plenty of strength in it. And uh, it allows the clearance for the, the cab brace. Do the other side and those bits are done. Got the compressor going in the background. Got my neighbour whipper snippering. Hey, that's a Sunday. So got the other side done. So if you look here, this is the first side I did. You can see where I've created that relief and the same here so got each side done hopefully ready for the um, cab to go on there I'm not going to try and put the cab forward at the moment I'm going to play around with some other things weld this up get it all squared up again so, so when I installed the subframe under the cab when it was up on the side of the road I couldn't get the whole thing in one piece so I kind of suspected that would be the case so what I did was cut these tack welds here off left them on the other side, managed to wangle that up underneath. So as it turns out, exactly where I had it originally welded is where it needs to be, so I'll line that back up. I can tack those, weld them in place. I will go through and shorten this so that it doesn't overhang. I'll plate it on the end eventually. Same with this piece here. When I cut the pieces out of here, they fell inside the tube, so I won't plate those up just at the moment. And when I do, before I plate the end here, I'll capture a nut in there for the bolt that comes up from underneath. So I can just easily go underneath, run a bolt through, put a washer on it, run a bolt through, tighten it up. Same here. Um, so I can get in underneath. I can get in underneath this. I'll probably capture a nut there. Probably not as important, but I'm, I probably will. Again, still trying to work out exactly what I'm doing here. But we'll sort that out. Also meant to say, um, in case you're wondering, it took about an hour from start to finish, including getting the gear out to do those. Uh, also meant to say, I mentioned the welder settings I used before, I pretty much use 0.8mm wire all the time. It can take 0.6 to 0.9. I don't bother changing it. I, I do panel work. I do pretty much everything with that. I guess if I was doing some really heavy duty stuff, I could use 0.9, but, and I do have it, but I just like 0.8 in there. I just adapt to that. Just made up some very simple triangular gussets out of some 50 mil by um, whatever that is, four mil or something, um, angle iron. Very simple. I bought it out so that it's about 200 mil long. Oh, sorry, 250 mil long on the outer side here. Gives a nice triangulation. I'm going to box it on the end here just with some plate, bring it down just to this outer lip of the, the um, RHS. I weld inside as well but uh, I've got a good bead of weld all around there, same through there. can pump the heat into there and uh, really make it stick. I've tried to make it so that this point here sort of just heads towards where the pickup, where the cab mount is. So um, the idea being that it sort of adds bracing to the points that matter. Triangles are an extremely strong shape, the strongest shape. So I always try to incorporate them into anything I do. Over here, got this one ready. So I've prepped up the metal, cleaned it all up. This is just an old bit of angle iron that I found lying around a while back. It's not rusty. I've actually, I cleaned it up and um, put phosphoric acid on it just to keep it in um, yeah, so that it's usable just give it a clean up so con contrary to what it looks like it's not rusty so that will just sit on there 
come through here like that again simple 45 degree angle nothing fancy about it sit on there load it up box the end in and away we go it'll make the back of that cab brace there very very strong same here I may or may not put some gussets on this I was going to put something just across the corner somewhere but I just need to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of the existing cab braces so if I do put something on I might actually do it after I put the cab back in place which is less than desirable from working on it but uh, at least I shouldn't have any, any interference problems. Also well, just while I think of it, the reason I've done this here to notch that chassis uh, that cab brace rail in as I said, I could have simply just moved this up about 20 mil. I didn't do that because what I wanted to do by notching this down it just brings the base of the cab down another 20 mil over the chassis rail. Just gives it that little bit more low. Now, I'm trying to get it as low as I can without making the job ridiculously difficult for myself. That's the reason. Okay, back into it. I was hoping I'd have a bit of flat bar lying around. I didn't, so I just had to cut a piece of angle iron to make a little plate there. So you can see I put it there, welded it on. I don't know if it's necessary for strength, but it just finishes it off. Um, obviously it'll add strength, but whether it was actually necessary, I don't know. So I literally just got a piece of angle iron, cut it to the right length, which is about 65 mil. Cut there, cut there. I've just been cleaning it up. And um, I've got one ready for this side as well. I think it's probably still hot. But, uh, so again, that'll just sit in there, that is hot. That'll just sit in there like that. And uh, I weld it in, I'll sort of lift it up. Put enough gap around it. And we'll be, get, we'll be done. I'll chuck that in. Just to be clear, I'm not a welder, I'm not a fabricator, like I have a go. But um, I've just put that in there. They get the heat turned up a little bit too much. You can see it's a bit undercut up here. And I think I uh, held it there a bit too long, got a bit of saggage. But at the end of the day, it's a little plate on the end of a gusset. So it's a gusset for a gusset. Um, it's not going anywhere. I'll probably just clean that up. It looks a bit saggy. But. Um, I'm pretty much ready to take this off, this subframe, flip it over, finish welding it. As I said, I may put gussets into those outriggers, but I'll finish welding everything up as best I can. Put some captured nuts in back here. Maybe I should do that. Try and tack something in there before I take it off. Um, yeah, come back to you. I've just popped the frame off, the subframe. You can see this is done underneath. I haven't welded anything around there yet. A little bit of surface rust from it sitting around. This is that gussing I was talking about. You can see the penetration in the welds there, which is great. This is um, the holes to be able to get to the cab mounts. So drop a bolt through there. I'll probably capture a nut in there. Again, same here. Bolt will come up from underneath the actual chassis rail. Come up here, capture a nut inside, block it on the end. Plated on the end here. Plenty of strength. And some of it's welded, some of it's not, but it um, has absolutely no flexibility or give in it, which is what I want. Having built my Chev in a similar way, by putting that subframe, that style, it's almost identical to my Chev one, putting that subframe on top of a chassis like this and then mounting it to the cab, it makes the whole thing so rigid. It's incredible how well it, it makes them hold together. So a couple of things, got this out. You can see chassis rusted there, that's okay. I'm going to go through, cut that section out, put a new plate in. We can box the top of that where I cut it previously. Um, this isn't actually rust, but I'll go through and fix things like that up. There is some rust in the bottom of the frame here. The frame's not too bad, I'll go through and pick it out. There, there is some spots of rust in it. It's actually got a lot of dirt and stuff in it, like a lot of dirt and stuff. So um, I'll give it a really good clean out. I'll make it all good. I'll go looking for problems and then fix them. 
but overall I think it's okay. I did find over here this chassis had a ding in it. I did run a straight edge and run some diagonal measurements and so on. It's not bent. It had a ding in it here. I, I was cleaning this up, just getting ready to just weld that. And I noticed there was a, a line through here and I, I didn't film it before. As there was a line, I thought, oh, there must be a crack here. So I was actually starting to think, oh, is this chassis worse than I thought? And um, I went to weld, I cleaned it up, went to weld it, and I thought it was soft. And then I realised, it was all lead. That's it there. So there's a big dent in it there. I ran a straight edge along the side of it, did some diagonal measurements. It's not bent, it's just got a, a ding in the side of it. So all I wanted to show you there was, to get that off, just some sort of butane torch. Yeah, doesn't have to necessarily be this one, it can just be uh, gas. Um, just go through, heat it up, it starts dripping, and if you want to speed it up, just get a white brush. Let's give it a scrub, scrub it off. You can't weld to lead. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. I may try and pull it out. I may just leave it as it is. It's it's a dent. It's not not a problem. I don't believe. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. So where I'm at at the moment, I'm going to go through just check. So a lot of these mounts seem okay. Um, I'll go through and check them all. These are common places you need to check on these things. I'll clean them up. Check them if in doubt, plate, replace. Um, these chassis are pretty ugly when they're made. they just got booger welds everywhere. Um, I don't know if it was a Friday chassis or what it was, but um, whenever I've seen them, they're, they're not the prettiest chassis in the world. They're finished. They are what they are. They work really well for this sort of thing. Anyway, so I'll show you that. Lead. Just got to patch this. So, as I said, that's pretty rusted out there. Um, so, I've just got some um, plate that's about the same thickness. Just made it a bit bigger. It's about 100 mil by 60 mil. So, I'm gonna go back to this point just here. I'll overlay it. Mark where it is. Cut it out. Weld that in. I'll, I think I'll drill the hole in it first. I was going to do it afterwards, but it's going to be a bit hard to get to with where the cab's sitting at the moment. So I'll drill the hole to the appropriate size to put the mount in. Then cut it and weld it and all that sort of stuff. I decided I'll cut the hole in it after I've welded it in. I'll put the subframe back on, mark out the hole, move it out of the way, use a hole saw. This is the piece that came out. So I've managed to cut into good metal. So I just stopped here to show you. So I've left quite a large gap there. It's probably about two and a half mil wide. And that way I can get plenty of good penetration in there. It's a bit hard to cut in the back there, so it's a bit rough, but I'll fill it with weld. And um, that way I can grind it down without being concerned about not having enough penetration there so fill that big gap and uh, you never know that no, never know any different just been buzzing around doing a few things so there was a spot of rust there in there so I replaced that put a plate in there also one put some uh, rust converter in there while I was at it uh, put the plate on here where um, the cab mount goes so uh, that was there somewhere. I took that out, replace it, and I'll drill the hole in once I know where the cab mount is. Subframe, I know. Then uh, I plated this piece here. Haven't welded it on the back yet, a bit hard to get to, but I've done that. And oh, I haven't ground this part up yet. But the crack that was in over here, I ground that up. No, so I welded that up, just got to grind it off. <coughs> I can't remember if I said before, I found some lead in here, there's a dent in the frame. I think I did say, so there's some lead there. Uh, the other mount, mounting points all look pretty good. So yeah, I'll just keep going around, if there's any other goals I find, I'll um, fix it up. Just about out of gas, so uh, today's jobs might be nearly done. Got the subframe in here, 
just started cleaning it up to uh, weld the other side so you know, this sort of thing around here and so on and I've, just because I've got it up here at the moment I just made a plate up it's just out of a piece of sheet a bit of three mil so, just got that there so it'll just cap the end of that cross member piece so just holding that there at the moment I go around weld it left a good mill, mill, mill and a half gap around the sides to be able to get plenty of penetration so I can grind it flat if I wish but I probably won't bother, bother. yeah so that's where I'm at at the moment okay well I hope you enjoyed that um, I did I did uh, feel like I made a lot of progress after that. So in the next video, what you're going to see is just button everything up. Everything will be finished. So um, tune back in for that one. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing, subscribing and commenting. And I'll see you on the next one. That'll be part three. And that'll be the final part of mounting the cab to the chassis. So see you then. Until then, stay safe.